It's pretty crazy that right now in the middle of a huge semiconductor shortage where people can't even buy existing graphics cards, there are rumors and leaks going around pertaining to next-gen hardware. So let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. If you're in the market for a graphics card, specifically if you're looking for AMD's latest RDNA 2 based graphics cards like the 6800 XT or 6900 XT, then you're unfortunately going to have a very bad time. They're always going out of stock instantaneously and when you can find them in stock, they're being sold for astronomically high prices. This has been an ongoing crap show since RDNA 2 and Ampere launched. It's only been getting worse and it doesn't seem like it's going to get better anytime soon. However, However, this won't stop enthusiasts and the tech press from talking about next-gen hardware. Recently, there has been some rumors going around that AMD's next-generation RDNA 3 GPUs, and more specifically their top-tier Navi 31 GPU will be approximately three times faster than Navi 21. These rumors started once a known hardware leaker, Yoko Yoshida, on Twitter responded to Paul from Red Gaming Tech that 2.5x the performance of Navi 21 is too little in regards to the performance leap that Navi 31 will be bringing, implying that it will be greater. So once people saw this, we started to hear the rumor mill go in full swing, talking about Navi 31 being three times faster than Navi 21. In other words, imagine if AMD released a new GPU, the 7900 XT for example, and it's three times faster than the 6900 XT. It's pretty crazy to even think they'll be able to accomplish that with just one generation, and I am doubtful they'll be able to achieve a figure so high. I want to circle back to a video I posted near the start of this year in January where there were some rumors and leaked patents from AMD, and those patents contained information pertaining to MCM designs and GPU synchronization methods. It really should be no secret at this point to think that AMD could leverage a multi-chiplet design for their next big GPU architecture. They already have working products shipping to consumers in their Ryzen desktop line, Threadripper HEDT, and server chips. We've seen the massive benefits these changes have brought to those product lines and the competitive performance advantages they have gained over their competitors. Now here are some things to consider about Navi 31 and why people have gotten this impression of it being this monster GPU. If it is using an MCM or multi-chiplet design, it's been rumored that it will be using 280 compute unit dies along with an IO die. So similarly to Zen 2 and Zen 3 where you have core complex dies along with an IO die, resulting in a mammoth 160 compute unit GPU. Bear in mind that the RX 6900 XT has one GPU die with 80 compute units, so I can see why some people may have thought that Navi 31 would have at least double the performance of Navi 21, though performance doesn't linearly scale with the amount of CUs there are. However, we can't discount the performance gains that can be had from other changes. First, AMD will be jumping to TSMC's 5 nanometer process, which I believe they said yields about 80% higher density than their 7 nanometer node, plus the usual performance per watt increases. Then we have architectural changes to go along with that. We can, which can include things like higher RPC, changes to the geometry pipeline, better memory compression methods, higher clocks, and so on. With MCM designs, one of its biggest drawbacks can be high latency, which makes sense instead of one large monolithic chip, you have separate chips so that creates more and longer pathways data has to go through, but I think AMD have found a way to probably mitigate this or at least diminish most of its impact. Plus with new software based tech like smart access memory, and hardware accelerated GPU scheduling, they'll have found ways to use these tools to help boost performance and use it in tandem with their drivers. Back in November of last year, TheStreet.com had done an interview with AMD's Rick Bergman, who said that with RDNA 2, they had targeted an improvement of 50% performance per watt, and we know that the final product had actually exceeded those expectations. Just like with RDNA 2, they're committed to bringing the same level imp of improvement for RDNA 3. He wouldn't say this if that wasn't at least their minimum performance target. I am expecting RDNA 3 to be at least 50% faster than RDNA 2, and that wouldn't be too bad of a leap gen on gen, but with the chance of them leveraging MCM, it could definitely be higher. Maybe 2x the performance, though I'm not on board the 3x improvement, just not yet that is. This is fine and well, but I'd still say take it with a grain of salt because all of this is very early information. As of recently, AMD haven't even given us any indication on when they'll be launching RDNA 3, and if it'll actually even be an MCM design. The only information we have are from those patents and some vague tweets. 
patents. Patents get filled out all the time, and you know a lot of those things don't even meet the light of day. With everything that's going on around the world, I'm not expecting them to show RDNA 3 until late 2021, let alone launch it. I think mid-2022 would be a more realistic expectations for when we can see Navi 31. Like apparently there was supposed to be a Zen 3 refresh on 6 nanometers, but then we heard it got cancelled, and that AMD would be focusing on launching Zen 4 later this year, or early next year. With these unforeseen circumstances, things are rather unpredictable. Now what about their competitor Nvidia, and how will RDNA 3 stack up against Ampere or Nvidia's next gen? Well, we're just going to have to wait and see. Like I said, it's still too early to even be talking about this, and there isn't even that much information out there surrounding Nvidia's next generation of GPUs, whether it will be based on Ada Lovelace or Hopper. There there were also some rumors a while back that Hopper would be also using an MCM design, but nothing really concrete to suggest that it was a definite design choice, and who knows, it might just be reserved for their data center solutions. So I'm not going to blow smoke and say that holy crap, Navi31 is going to destroy Nvidia and they'll for sure take the gaming crown, because nobody really knows what's going to happen. Now let's just say that AMD does indeed manage to take the crown away from Nvidia when it comes to traditional rasterization performance. So what? Unless it's a huge 20 or 30% lead in each segment, then it's not going to affect Nvidia at all. This is because now the conversation goes much deeper than just who has the faster GPU. This isn't 2015 anymore. Gone are the days where you'd simply compare an R9 390 to a GTX 970 in rasterization, because now there are so many other factors to consider. Who has better ray tracing performance? I know this was considered a joke back in 2018, but look at the PC gaming market now. Almost every month now we see two or three games that come out with ray tracing support or get some enhanced RTX edition upgrade. Nvidia has been integrating their RTX and DLSS libraries into popular game engines to make it easier for developers to leverage their tech. Speaking of DLSS, where is AMD's answer? We're hearing it might come out next month or later this summer, but that's really about it. We don't know how good it will be, they haven't shown us any demos, will it be as good as Nvidia's DLSS? What about a good built-in encoder and streaming software? What about CUDA? Don't get me wrong, I like how competitive the 6800 XT and 6900 XT are against their Nvidia counterparts, but that's pretty much it. They don't compete as well in those other areas I just mentioned. Like, I just finished playing Control on my 4K OLED with maxed out settings, the highest ray tracing preset, and it was totally playable and smooth for the most part, and that was thanks to DLSS. However, I couldn't have played it like that without the use of, you know, that, that tech. Had I been using an AMD GPU, I would have most definitely have to turn off ray tracing, turn down some other settings, and maybe even go down to 1440p. In my opinion, it's not just rasterization performance AMD needs to focus on, but they need to be on parity with Nvidia on those other features, or you know, at least close the gap. Like, unless they can significantly get ahead to alleviate those differences, like for example, if the 7900 XT is like 20 or 30% faster so that the ray tracing penalty doesn't seem as severe, Otherwise, I, I still see NVIDIA being the winner for the next generation. Who knows, perhaps with this new MCM design, they'll have specialized components that focus on doing such tasks, similarly to how NVIDIA has RT cores or special tensor cores for deep learning. I think our DNA 3 will be a very unique architecture and will separate itself in a good way from past iterations. So, I am very much looking forward to it. I hope you guys found this video to be informative and helpful. Let me know your thoughts down below. Check out the video description on ways to support the channel and for my other videos. If you guys are interested in more content like this, then make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care and I'll see you guys in the next one.